Hello guys, welcome back to Dharma Geosphere. Today I will be interacting with you on another very interesting topic of uh, spatial analysis in uh, geography. So uh, we will start off uh, from where we left on the uh, Hartshorn and Scoffers debate. Uh, one of the main outcomes of the Hartshorn and Scoffers uh, debate was uh, that uh, geography as a discipline started moving uh, towards uh, geography as a discipline in distance. That is, uh, now uh, geography started moving towards uh, various uh, um, the communication networks and the uh, flow of uh, geography was uh, um, such that all the, the um, various goods, places, uh, etc. which moved along these uh, communication lines became uh, an integral and a very important part of uh, geography and uh, geography as a uh, science of uh, spatial interaction uh, brought in new vistas uh, um, as a spatial science and it uh, gradually um, uh, grew into uh, various uh, kinds of uh, um, uh, spatial distribution. Uh, this new uh, orientation towards uh, geography was mainly focused on the uh, study of uh, spatial uh, patterns, uh, those kind of spatial uh, patterns which were uh, varied and uh, widespread and are applicable to the various domains and uh, disciplines uh, within geography. So <clears throat> one of the major um, centers for uh, the spread of uh, the geography as a uh, spatial science or study of uh, spatial uh, pattern was uh, uh, Seattle uh, in uh, Washington uh, led by none other than uh, Garrison and the other important centers were also Wisconsin and uh, Iowa. <coughs> uh, but uh, it is the uh, Seattle led uh, uh, center led by uh, Garrison uh, which uh, brought in this theory of uh, central place. You may have heard uh, in the other chapters of the uh, in, in theories, the central place theory of Ullman. They actually started off uh, under the leadership of uh, Garrison uh, in uh, Seattle, uh, Washington. And another more uh, important uh, center was uh, uh, Princeton, uh, University of Princeton, where uh, uh, Stewart took up uh, uh, the uh, very interesting uh, population dynamics uh, relating to the various laws of physics. So that's how um, the uh, geography as spatial science um, kept on uh, growing uh, within the uh, United States. But even outside the uh, United States, uh, in the University of Lund, uh, pronounced as L U N D. Uh, um, Hegestrand uh, started uh, uh, this movement in um, uh, University of uh, Lund, and that is where um, uh, it also spread, and uh, that is where the uh, central place theory um, advocated by um, Christeller and Bloch uh, evolved during the um, um, under the uh, leadership of uh, Hegestrand in the Lund University. So geography slowly uh, began to uh, develop as a discipline uh, relating uh, time and space. Uh, but this movement uh, unfortunately except for uh, the University of Lund in uh, outside USA uh, did not take off uh, the way it should have and the way it has started in the other parts of the world. Till uh, of course uh, geography as the as a positivist uh, science uh, began its evolution in none other than the Cambridge University by two of the uh, greats in uh, geography that is uh, um, Corley and uh, Hackett. Hackett and Corley's question has not been asked so far but they have been very important. I told you in my uh, earlier lecture also so there could be a question related to uh, these two or either of uh, or one of them. So they wrote uh, uh, the much talked about the most famous uh, two books um, uh, that is one is the 
Frontiers in uh, Geographic Teaching and the others in Models in Geography. Both the books are important. If you can get through these books um, online, just uh, go through the um, summary, executive summary or the introduction and all that because these two are very, very important. So what they, um, they took geography to a, a different level. So through this book, uh, both Haggett and Corley feed it to the geographers to uh, move away or to do away with this uh, dichotomy of physical and human geography and uh, through fusion of models and theories they wanted that uh, uh, the geography or the ge geography of geometry or the geometrical patterns involved in geography so important geography should be merged uh, logically with the uh, physical and uh, human geography so that it uh, becomes a tripartite um, triangular form where all the three uh, occupy the um, three uh, apices of uh, the uh, triangle, not neglecting the uh, um, uh, geometric patterns of uh, geography which was so far uh, being neglected and not part, were part of the quantitative revolutions. So uh, the second book, uh, Models in Geography, is the logical extension uh, of the earlier book on uh, frontiers of geographic teaching. It was even more widely uh, received and uh, it showed the pathways to how scientific methods uh, could be used to study the scientific aspects of discipline. And this is how um, the um, systematic spatial science uh, of geography um, came to be totally embedded in the uh, teachings and the learnings of uh, geography for in the 1950s and uh, even 60s. So that is how uh, the spatial science um, in uh, geography or geography as a spatial science uh, grew up. I'll uh, show you uh, some slides with more details. But please remember, always try to um, read this geography chronologically so that you can understand and uh, not only just in words but also in spirit how each of these concepts uh, evolved. Uh, so now uh, we'll move on to the slides. So geography as a science of uh, spatial analysis. So uh, the Harshon and uh, Schaufer's uh, debate, one of the outcomes of this was uh, <coughs> being, it has been increasingly viewed as a, a discipline of uh, distance. So much so that the network of uh, communication lines and the flow of goods, people and messages passing through them began to receive increasing attention. So as the discipline dealing in distance, uh, geography became increasingly a study of uh, spatial interaction since it is these interactions uh, that created the spatial patterns that the new geography as the spatial science sought to explain. So thus the uh, new orientation in geography towards search for theory and uh, the morphological laws increasingly focused on the study of spatial patterns of diverse kinds. So the major centers of uh, development of this uh, geography as spatial science was the University of Iowa, the University of Wisconsin and uh, in fact uh, Seattle in Washington also became uh, uh, quite an important center under the leadership of uh, Garrison wherein the uh, Woolman's uh, focus of uh, the central place theory also developed. A lot of experts uh, uh, visited this uh, uh, Seattle and there was a lot of churning and learning uh, happening at this center as a special science. So the other important center was uh, the University of uh, Princeton and uh, uh, Stewart who drew uh, regularities in the distribution of uh, various aspects of uh, population dynamics that seem to follow laws similar to those of physics. He developed a new field of science called the social physics which was based on the premise that the dimensions of society are analogous to the physical dimensions. Outside the uh, university, outside the uh, uni uh, un US, the, it was the University of Lund in Sweden, uh, 
uh, which uh, uh, developed as a uh, center under the leadership of uh, Hegerstrand. And then uh, it was here where the uh, central place theory of uh, Christopher and Losch was uh, brought into the uh, Swedish geography and later on under the inspiring uh, leadership of Hager Strand, uh, Lop soon became a premier center for the theoretical and mathematical connect of geography. In spite of the uh, contributions uh, from uh, Lop, the quantitative uh, revolution or that uh, uh, theoretical uh, conceptual form of geography did not uh, uh, move outside U uh, USA and was hardly uh, visible. A focused emphasis on geography, however, as a uh, positivist science was started at the University of Cambridge uh, under the joint leadership of uh, Corley and uh, Haggart. Uh, the joint effort brought in uh, two very highly influential books. The one is The Frontiers in Geographical Teaching and The Models in Geography. Uh, so the editors of the first book strongly pleaded that the geographer should do away with the false dichotomy between regional and systematic studies, physical and human geography, etc. and suggested that through a fusion of the ideas of models and uh, regions, uh, the geography should be amalgamated as one single science and um, a third dimension of uh, the geometrical design and should be added into that so that geography is now are going to be a fused complete uh, science. So uh, coming to the frontiers in geographical uh, teaching, uh, editors of this book, uh, um, as I said earlier, uh, suggested doing away with these uh, false dichotomies and they emphasized that geometry not only offers a chance of uh, welding aspects of uh, human and physical geography in a new networking partnership, but also reviews the central role of cartography in relation to the two. So their solution uh, was that uh, to press for the re-establishment of uh, kind of a, a tripartite balance in geography by building up the neglected geogram geometrical side of the discipline to uh, the both uh, human and the physical geography. Uh, the uh, second book, Models in Geography, was but a logical uh, extension of the Frontiers volume and it presented a synthesis of the work done by the adherents of uh, the quantitative uh, theoretical parallel group. And the volume was widely received in the countries of the British Commonwealth and as a declaration of crusade against uh, the old ideographic geography built around the concept of regions as uh, unique entities. And as a declaration of faith in new geography structure around methods and goals of the positivist science. Uh, the book served to demonstrate how scientific methods all could be used in the study of systematic aspects of discipline. So these two books, uh, their main findings, the main recommendations, please go through and uh, remember in any of the answers related to geographic thought perspectives in human geography, try to uh, link it with this because uh, this is a, a, a kind of a building block uh, to what was earlier the ideographic geography and what would uh, later um, become a revolution that is the quantitative revolution. So you will be able to write a well-rounded and analytical answer if you grasp um, what these two books uh, uh, basically uh, flagged uh, in the evolution of uh, geography. So uh, that is all guys, um, this is an important, a short but a very important uh, uh, topic, uh, don't read it in an isolated way, uh, try to read it along with uh, the other chapters and along with uh, the positivist approach and the quantitative revolution to get exactly how and where the spatial analysis uh, fitted in the evolution of uh, geography. So guys stay tuned, now uh, I'll soon catch up with you on the quantitative revolution and the positivist approach as well and um, we're all going uh, fine keep the uh, tempo up and all the best stay home stay safe and study well bye